Hello and welcome to the Ventura Rock Spot. I'm Pam Baumgartner. Ventura Rock Spot is a interview program where we talk to musicians in and around the 805 as well as some of the artists and musicians who come to the 805 to play. And we sit down, we have a little bit of a dialogue, but if you'd like to see past episodes of Ventura Rock Spot, or if you'd like to find out how to be a guest on the program, just go to VenturaRockSpot.com. And joining me on the program this time around is Max Cash. Hello, Max. Welcome to the program. Hi, Pam. Thanks for having me. Of course. Now, we met several years ago down at a little um, haven here in town that's no longer here. But it was called Zoe's. And that's where I first got to know you and your music. And you were uh, a performer once to watch, I believe. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, that was the, I think the last year they did it. Um, before Zoe's uh, very unfortunately shuttered. <laughs> yes. Well, it, we all keep in touch time. with them, don't we? Polly and Steve? Yeah. Yeah, sure do. Okay, why don't you go ahead and give us a little bit of background on yourself. Where did you grow up, for starters? I grew up in um, the Upper Ojai, uh, in California, which is, I guess, you know, still part of the town of Ojai, but it's a little um, out of town on the way to Santa Paula. Um, right. I grew up on a ranch up there and. uh you know, didn't didn't really have any designs as far as uh, you know playing baseball and you know feeding chickens. So <laughs> um, I left as I left uh, Ohio as soon as I could, um, as I think a lot of you know people do with their hometown, no matter where that is. And then um, kind of bopped around for a little bit and found my way back eventually. Um, so you, now, you started now I call out it in Ohio, but then did you end up in LA or did you end up in another part of the States or? Yeah, I tried, I tried LA for a little bit. Um, was never fond of living there, but, uh, I mean, I, I appreciate it for, for what it is, which is, I mean, it was sort of a, this, uh, you know, city state, um, of, uh, of, of, of culture and madness, but yes. I never liked living there myself, um, so I never did. I tried. I had dalliances, but I never, I never made it past like three months. <laughs> you have to be very, um, I think, ambitious to be in LA because it, you're so involved with uh, uh, just transporting yourself from one end of town to the other, which is exhausting. But I think that that challenge, that that challenge to living in the city and just just getting yourself around, that actually lends itself to really um, dynamic art. And I think LA has always kind of been a been a center of really dynamic art and uh, um, influence all across the the world in many mediums. You know, so uh, I'd like maybe I'd like to try it one of these days again as an adult, <laughs> see how it works. All right, so we want to get to know you and your music. So why don't you go ahead and play the first song? During this episode, you're going to be performing live. So what's the first song you're going to play for us? Well, I um, I didn't think about it until now, but <laughs> I think the I think the first song I'm going to play is called "Old Road Alone," and it's a uh, it's on this record that I just came out with, and. Um, it's a kind of a simple song, but it's a uh, truthful. <laughs> I'm sorry I couldn't quit you. You know I tried before, but it always made its way around. Back to my door, rapping loudly, laughing like a clown. I buried that love inside of a tomb and pulled the cover of stone closed. I said a quick prayer and I felt satisfied 
walks that hard road alone. And I came back to see about her once. And maybe there was something I could say. But everybody she ever told me she knew that she left yesterday. Back down the shadows of an empty street where the gamblers call home. They throw their cards into the wind and they walk that whole road. Song was playing on the radio tonight. I don't know who sang that melody, but it cut right through me like it knew me, like she was singing just for me. I turned it up and I. Rolling windows down, the hot summer flying alone. All that night in the thick of it all, running down that old road alone. Stopping everybody, I pay him as I roll through another little port in some hog eyed town. Pink women and make you feel so blue. I'm lifting a load, a heavy and a shaking. Across a desert of stone, and the blinding heat all、oh, in my bare feet, running down that old road. Beautiful. That was just lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, tell me about that that song in particular. Now, what was the inspiration behind that? Well,、um, I think there's like a point in life, you know, when you、um, when you have to、uh, go do things by yourself, and you, you know、um, these people that you knew or these people that used to look out for you,、um, they just They're just not there anymore, you know. And not 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 that they, not that they don't choose to be, but you just、uh, you come to an age where, you know, you 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 throw your horse off a cliff and and、uh, face the world by yourself, you know. Do you sit there and you think about that sentiment, and then the words come to you, or how is that songwriting process for you? You know, sometimes.、Um, Sometimes there's an idea that that sort of、um, there's a kernel of something that that evolves and takes on different shapes as you flesh it out.、Um, but I find that those songs are really hard to write, you know, or they take time. They really、yeah. take time to write.、Um, and in the case of something like that, the song I just played,、uh, it, they just come really quickly and without a lot of thought. And、um, There's no effort. It just happened. You know, they just expose themselves nakedly and completely. And、um, 
you know, I like to think that in that in in that sense, I didn't even write them. You know, they just they already existed somewhere, and I I just pulled them out of the I just pulled them out of the you know out of the cosmos because <laughs> it doesn't up. even yeah it doesn't it 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 just feels so. Uh, uh, it just kind of comes through your heart, you know. It doesn't come through your head, you know. Right, which it's is honest. Y- yeah, and it it requires no thought, you know. Right. So, um, yeah, for that song, there wasn't really even a process. It just kind of it just kind of happened. I had kind of had that melody in my head for a while, you know. Um, but uh, but the words just kind of came on their own, yeah. So you have, um, and I don't know, I know we're talking about music, but you have had an incredible life to date so far, and not everyone has had what you have. Um, As a young man, you were an actor, and you have acted throughout your life, Um, and I know that music has always been a part of your life, which is what we're talking about today, but I have to say that my daughter and I watched the movie Holes, I got to say, at least 12 Mm. times. (laughs) <laughs> it was just one of those movies that yeah. was just like so well done. And, you know, it was like to have that. It in is. Your, so, I mean, I wouldn't yeah, say it's part it, of life, but not everyone has that, you know? Well, you know, it's funny. Uh, I think that, I think that movie was really special to a lot of people. Yeah. Because, um, well, first off it was well done and, and, uh, and, um, um, they had some great music in there. You know, they picked some really interesting music back and in, in Dr. John and some of the old Moby stuff, which was kind of, this was kind of different, I think for Disney, but, um, it's, that movie's had a long shelf life because the book, the book is really extraordinary and the book is required re- reading in eighth grade. So, and it still is, um, wow deals with a lot of so- socio-political uh, uh, things, mm-hmm. you know, obviously still relevant. And so because it's required reading uh, and, the, and the fact that the movie exists, uh, every year there's a whole new crop of people that still get to enjoy it, you know, freshly, which is really unique. And um, as they read the book and then they watch the movie. Um, but to be honest with you, it... it uh, <laughs> You know, up until the up until the point of doing that, um, you know, I again, I didn't have any designs uh, designs on doing on on having that career at all. Yeah. It's, it just sort of landed in my lap. I was, you know, doing a play, and somebody, some guy from L.A., come up and so oh, you saw the play on the weekend and said, "Oh, you want to come down and audition for this thing?" Said, sure. And that was really it. That was it. You know, wow. there wasn't a, there was. Um, up until that point, I mean, I was like, you know, you know, feeding sheep at 4.30 a.m., you know. Yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't, it was just, it, it was totally random. And, well, that's uh, awesome. And then this guitar, I went and, this was my first guitar. I went and bought it myself. So that was, that was what was exciting to me about it, you know. Right. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't really care about Hollywood or anything. I just, I wanted to buy a guitar that I liked. <laughs> yeah. So you had a charmed career. Do it, it yeah, happy, but you're totally not lucky. Yeah, I don't don't think so. If offered to you, would you do additional roles? Because you were in Whiplash not too long ago, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah, and again, that was totally random. That was totally random. I had come back seriously, seriously. I had come back from which is which makes me think that maybe maybe the universe is telling me you should keep doing this. There you go. No, I I had come back from New York City. I've been living there for about five years. And um, I uh, needed a job. My brother was going to Santa Monica City College, and I drove him to Santa Monica. He drove him there in the morning to go to school. I thought I'll just put, you know, put around LA and see what's going on down here. And I went into this coffee shop in Santa Monica, and they said they were hiring. I said, "Well, I, I could do it." And they they said, "Great, come in tomorrow. You can work here." I was like, okay, and my first, and I, had, I didn't know what I was doing, but I needed something. I was so kind of lost. And my old, the second, the first day I was there, my old manager walked in. I hadn't seen her in like six years, and she goes, "Oh my God, hey, what's it? How are you?" I said, "Great." She says, "You want to go on some auditions?" I said, "Sure." And she, the, three days later, she sends me Whiplash, and I went and went in there, and then it was, and then 
ended up doing the film. So it was just this, it's just sort of, it's always happened sort of randomly. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that story. Um, we're going to circle back to New York City in just a minute. However, I think it's time for another song. Oh, so. okay. Sure. <laughs> this is a brand new song. I'm going to, I'm going to try to play it for the, for the first time for anybody outside of my uh, for close friends. Okay. She's a frighteningly capable Viking woman with eyes that could cut cold glass. And she, she could frighten your head in between her thighs. And while you're dying, make you kiss her ass. Climb a mountain to watch the sun rise And that same night she's howling at the moon But when she gets home and lays down to sleep yeah, She still likes to be the a little spoon And her toes are like popsicles first thing in the morning and she takes her coffee with sugar and lots of cream and she cries watching romantic movies roller coasters always make her scream she's a tender hearted teddy bear always brave and sometimes scared no matter what you say she sees the truth She's my woman through and through Just when you think that you've got something figured She's ten steps ahead and moving fast Brain like a freight train and a right on track And all I can do it's just to watch her fly past And she'll never tell your brothers That she beat you once on wrestling She still says, honey, I know that you were tired And you know she's just being sweet And so you sweep it off her feet And she smiles at you just like a child She's my woman And you know deep down she doesn't need you But she wants you all the same And she is everything that she set out to be Beyond everything I dreamed Beyond everything I dreamed Very nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, we're going to circle back to New York City. No L.A., but you were living in New York City for five years. Is that what you said? Yeah. What were you doing in New York City? And what part of New York City were you in? Well, I was doing a hodgepodge of things, you know, trying to write songs and, and um, going into the village and, you know, trying to trying to chase down those um you know luminaries that came came through that part of the city yeah. and and anything anything is going on there at any given time you know you want to walk out the door at 3 a.m and see uh um you know um drag queen dwarves doing lip sync uh shows um you, that's there, you know, and and um, <laughs> it is, and and it's uh, something about it feels feels really excessively human, you know. It's it's sort of like uh, no no one's uh, no one's gonna look at you weird for for just trying to trying to be what you want to be, which is because they they you know they've seen it all or they've got some place to be and they don't care, <laughs> which is <laughs> which is which is really liberating. Yeah. Well put, well put. Let's go to your recording now. Um, I know that after Ones to Watch that you um, 
you want a contract or you want a reporting experience. Tell me about that. And then let's talk about the most recent one that you did. Yeah, uh, that was uh, uh, a, a, an EP that I did up in Santa Barbara with uh, Tarek Akoni, mm-hmm. very accomplished uh, musician and, and uh, musical director for a, l- a lot of different guys. Uh, and uh, he he was uh, incredibly generous and gracious with with uh, the the people he put around me to record that and um, um, was that you your know, first time recording? Try out. That wasn't my first time recording, but it was my first time recording with people that knew what they were doing. Okay, um, that's a good- <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, that made that made me feel, I think. Um, excited about what the songs could be. I mean, I mean, I remember recording one song and and uh, halfway through it, was we did everything live with just a great band he put together. And um, halfway through recording, I'd missed my cue to come back in, and and uh, because I was so engrossed with listening to the to to the musicians play my song. I never heard it sound like that before. I didn't know they could sound like that, you know? And that was really exciting. So anyways, yeah. So he did oh, that. He, he, yeah. Yeah. But I was just, I thought, well, I just want to listen to you guys. I mean, that sounds so, that sounds so delightful. Um, <laughs> and, um, and that, yeah, we just did, we did a really limited run of that. Didn't, didn't even master it or anything. Um, just kind of ran it off on on a hundred CDs, and Polly Hoganson from Zoe's, she got one, and and uh, there was this uh, this event that used to be run at the at the ranch show in Ojai called Folk Steady, and she mm-hmm. said, "Come down, come down." Uh, my buddy Jesse Siebenberg is down here, and um, I'm I gave, I'm going to give him your CD, and I think you should meet him. I think you guys should work together so she gave him the cd and we met and it was uh cool we hit it off yeah. just as, as pals and he i guess he went home and listened to the cd and then he called me that night and was like let's make a record man get in here what, what do you you know how many more of these you got and said, well i got a lot of them and he said so that week we met it up and started doing the demos and um yeah it took a took a while to kind of come full circle on it and and sure. finally get to the point of releasing it but uh um i think we made the record we wanted to make good okay D- can you play something off of that one for us yeah sure this is going to be the last one that we're going to be able to fit into this episode so tell me a little bit about this one hmm well this one's uh this one's called Learning to Fly. Not the Pink Floyd Learning to Fly or the Tom Petty Learning to Fly. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> I guess <coughs> I guess it's just one of those easy titles to come to naturally. Um, and it's just sort of um sort of a travel log, I guess. You know, maybe the maybe the flip side of the coin of uh of old road alone or something, maybe the uh, the darker side of that coin. My little baby, I said this to you before. I didn't hear me, you were busy with the chores, picking up the crumbs. Or the crackers on the floor, calling back the memories of what you said in war, like women do when they hustle out the door. Now you could care less if I crack your score, picking up the pieces like a ragged old go shoot your guns. There ain't no trigger you could pull. Make it easy to leave a shot at the door. No, I leave you with your power chip about it at the hole. Hot concrete is on the 
fish of the day Clogging all the veins so it paid its way And all the foreman is sleeping And it's hard to say If he believes in this world I just willing to pay for a grace in the past You someone else to say Monsters gnashing, stealing ropes, spewing curled ash Built to bent and beaten rods, ignited fire and gas While rolling thunder through the streets The engine wheezing gas Sucking through the air supply of future and past Go ask your local man at George, you think you're gonna last But oh, you little nothing, oh, you let the time go by You didn't ask for nothing when you were learning to fly Go ahead, look away, I know you won't do I'll Go ahead, I know it'd make you feel good I knew it would Fences are all over, man, they're cutting up the land Pushed against the interstate, squaring out the sand I saw one body in there, California man Told me that it's all brought up to New York City man And the only cowboys left was south of Rio Grande I met a girl in Eureka with a busted TV Born out in the wasteland with no papers to sheet She could talk my head off, but she barely could read I didn't know where I was, could you point me home please? She said whichever way you go, you put the desert heat for nothing when you were learning to fly but oh you, you let the time go by Thank you. So, Max, tell me, how can people find out more about you, about your music, and about you in general? Can do you have a website, or is it social media? Yeah, they can find me uh, on all the streaming services, Apple Music and Spotify, and uh, uh, LimeWire, probably. I don't know. And how do you spell your last name? Because it's not C A S H. No, it's K A S. As in Sam, C H. Okay, good. Yeah, and um, the, uh, I'm, the, they can find me on Bandcamp too. So All did right, you? Did you? Part, oh, I was wondering. Did you? Did you listen to the record? I played a cut on the radio show. It's lovely. You did a great job, Jesse, with Jesse and everything. Right? That's the one that you sent me. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I got it. Thank you. Okay. So what are your short-term and long-term goals then? Mm, short-term goals is uh, eat dinner, and long-term goals is eat more dinner. <laughs> okay. Enough said. Well, we're going to wrap up the show. On behalf of our producer, Michelle Hoover, in GWC Productions, our Ventura TV, and VenturaRocks.com, I'm Pam Baumgartner. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>